Hi everyone. I just wanted to do some videos today and catch up with everyone because my dear old computer there has been updating and updating and updating for hours now and I'm just not thinking that's very good. Um, so instead of wasting the day and procrastinating, I thought I'd actually get in and do some more videos. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about why sort of people would want to transition from an operational role to a management role. And it's quite simple really because understanding what does an operator do, let's go through it and then we'll have a look at what does the manager do and how you can sort of see how it might move your business forward. So an operator, he or she is someone who mans the business hours. Um, they're the front uh, customer interface whenever there's problems or, um, or even just general sales and so forth. They control a lot of the work health and safety that's in the organisation. Uh, they handle the transactions and all the banking. They do a lot of data entry and, and probably do their own book work. Um, they teach new staff new processes and how that they want you know, the staff to work in their business. Uh, and you'll find that staff is probably just uh, catering babysitting hours. It's probably not a full on talent pool employee, someone who's going to actually drive the business forward. They actually update all their own technology. So uh, they look after all that. They, they probably don't even outsource that sort of situation there. They make sure that they've got the antiviruses, they're doing their updates, they're changing all programs over uh, and they're doing it all themselves. Um, they are doing their marketing themselves. So, you know, this particular person probably doesn't have a big budget and doesn't want to spend with an, you know, a PR company or anything like that. And they are actually trying to nut out why people aren't coming to their marketing and just keep changing and, and entering into sort of collaborations of industry ventures uh, like your tourism industries or uh, your chamber of commerce or something that might be actually doing some advertising for the area and piggyback onto those ones. Um, they're also part of the distribution team, so they get all the, the sales in and then they're actually fulfilling the orders and going out, so whether that's even in service or or um, products uh, and you'll find that they're actually part of that that scenario that they're out there you know putting their their stamp of approval on um, you know the customer's satisfaction of the work that's being done um, they actually update their own CRM so which is your customer relationship management system uh, so they are actually just probably having an Excel spreadsheet or something like one of the free things like MailChimp or something where they're introducing all the people to it and they're updating and, and hopefully they're at least sending a newsletter out or something uh, or a catalogue of when, when things are having sales and what have you. And they're also the one that's in charge of updating all the procedures. So you can see their role is huge. You know, they're doing it pretty much all themselves when you're operating. And it's sort of, there's no time. There's no time for personal stuff. There's no time for analysing the business. There's no time for... Um, you know, doing anything other than keeping that momentum of the business going. Now, if we transition over and start looking at managing roles, this is what a manager does. Okay, he looks at the metrics and spends only what is needed. So when I say the metrics, we've got different points that we're collecting information on, which is like, you know, how many people came through the door, how many leads did I get people to comment on, um, how many people, you know, got my free thing or whatever else and it's built my database up, you know, how many people then, you know, if I did a follow-up phone call, did I actually go and get, you know, people to purchase again? Just those sorts of things. Okay, so they look at the metrics. They also look at, you know, how much people are spending in one, one particular sale, how many people are um, being frequent um, people that they sell and how many leads are coming through the door. Okay, they refine their security. So when I say that, they're, they're refining, um, making sure that, you know, as a boss, he can tap in on his phone, or he or she can tap in on his phone or his computer, and they can see exactly what's going on. You've got things that every time the till opens, it's gonna match a certain transaction. There's gotta be that sort of money that's in the till. Um, there could be things where there's just camera points all over the joint, 
and it'll send up alarms if someone goes into a particular room. Um, it could be key entries, um, whatever else, just to manage the fact that, you know, although we have wonderful staff and so forth, we don't want to also get ripped off in the same process. So they've got their security down pat that they know what's going on in the business, even though they're not there. Okay, refining systems. So we're going leads, fulfillment, and a lifetime customer. So we need to nurture that one there and they need to actually see that those systems are actually nurturing the people. They are um, helping not get the complaints. They are helping to get more sort of rave reviews um, from their customers. Um, they refresh staff roles. Now, when I say this, is that new ideas come from new people. You may have wonderful staff, but people who are managing and people who are moving an organization ahead, they have to be constantly being innovative and you know trying new stuff and bringing in new expressions to market to people. So, you know, if you've got the same person in the same role for say five to 10 years, you're gonna have the same sort of output all the time. But if you constantly keep refreshing those key people, um, I think you'll get a new vibe that keeps coming through, a new innovation um, or, you know, something that, you know, they can bring to the, the table something from another area that you hadn't seen before and it works really well and tackles in with the customers. Uh, they brainstorm innovation and marketing ideas. So, you know, they get a group together or, you know, of masterminds and they thrash out what's actually changing in their culture. What is um, the new may way of marketing to these particular people? Is it another form of device? Like at the moment, we've gone from phone marketing, phone cold calling, to email marketing, and now to message bots seems to be uh, another one that's working really well. Other ones have been SMS messages that are coming up on your phone because there's a better read rate and so forth. So it's always sort of brainstorming, you know, how we're going to get under the nose of people and it's also about the innovation we need to see that our company is evolving our company is um, not just going to be renowned for this particular service or product we are actually just moving with the times and with the trends okay um, they obviously look at the budget and the forecasting uh, and when I say that they're sort of saying that cash flow is king and we need to make sure that cash flow is constantly there and how we're doing is there is monitoring month by month to make sure that there's enough if there's seasonal trends or um, threats and so forth to our business income that they have that under control now, uh, staff induction training and targets. Now, this is a very good one. We can actually have staff, but staff that aren't trained well are just babysitters. Staff that don't uh, have the allowance to be more creative or add, to, add their own value or skill to it, um, they're just babysitters. So staff there that don't have any actual targets to meet um, are just you know wasting hours for a paycheck. You know, we want our staff to actually be a valued member of our team. So therefore, take control of those sorts of issues and mould them to what you want. Get from them the skills and so forth that they could present to the business and actually see if you can utilise it in the right areas. Okay, partnership deals. This is another thing that the managing side does. Uh, it looks at ways that you have a particular, say, service and there's a product that might complement that and they join forces or um, you have a database that sort of you know tackles this sort of side of people but they actually would fit a database as well of a pro another product coming in um, that you could collaborate as in market on each other's database um, to sort of see if you get new leads coming through to enhance your database okay uh, delegating a manager is good if he is a leader and a leader sometimes rolls up his sleeves and gets into it but if he takes too much time in operating he can't actually use his brain or he she um, brain to you know start analyzing which way the business is going and how we can actually make it grow so he's actually just you know put his business on hold so to delegate the workout is to give it to someone else with some targets and guidelines of how you would like it completed and having some sort of measure 
to know that has been completed well. Now this is a bit of a thought out process but it means also that people now can have some responsibility and some freedom in what they're doing to make sure that they're working for the benefit of the company. Your sales team's uh, direction and rewards. So if you've got a sales team and you're reaching certain targets, actually have a reward system there where you are actually now acknowledging and appreciating the fact that these people have gone and done certain highs and they've tackled certain customers and they've shown a real professionalism. Uh, something that you know your company and your your vision of your company is proud to have that person on board make it known to everyone that that's the correct behavior that you know we want from everyone customer relationships now you are the person there that manages the relationship the staff who are operating are the front they're the interface um, that the customer will have a rapport with but you are the back-end person that everyone who's a customer likes to rub shoulders with the owning person or the the one that's in charge basically <clears throat> so you know you're the one that has to manage that relationship and sometimes it means like you know break it down into your database about how much people spend with you over a year and then look at probably the top you know 10 to 15 people there and see what they're spending and then work out something where you actually spend time with these people whether it's a, a like a game of golf or you invite them out for the end of year Christmas party or you go to the races together um, and spend a little bit of money with them back <clears throat> that's just enhancing the relationship so you are also one that is responsible for paying the bills and um, the pays. So you should never really delegate your bank account details out to anyone else. You can get them to do all the data entry and the progression up to, but you do the payments out. That is your role. No one else can do that one there. Um, if you do give that to someone else, have a separate bank account where you actually have to put that money that they request into that account and then they can pay from there. Okay, just safeguards uh, any problems of anyone over typing a wrong number uh, into your bank account and having more taken out than is needed. You're also one that would probably do some quoting on jobs. You'd go out there and um, you would actually go and get the jobs to keep coming in, meet the new people um, and just you know let your workers handle it but you go and find out what exactly it is that the customer needs. You'd also be looking at how you're automating your marketing and driving people through a funnel. So you would be in charge of that as well. Um, that is something where, you know, you don't have to do it yourself, but you can certainly go and supervise and liaison with someone who is skilled to be able to do it, who does have the numbers behind them of database people or, you know, that they could tap into and, you know, sell your brand. And talking about brand, you're in charge of your brand. Totally, this is your brand. This is your company. This is something that you know you need to make sure that what people see out there is what this company is about, and you know, vice versa, they know exactly uh, what you stand for, what your brand is, what, what it is that you do, and you've got to be forefront in people's minds. So, when you've got your staff there, you're also training them that you know, this is our vision, this is our mission, and this is what we're about. And you know we don't want people on board that are going to you know make that you know a bit of a messy confusing mess basically we want a very strong brand uh, we want people to actually resonate with us okay so there's just some of the things so you can see there's a vast difference between operating and managing and what we want to try and do is get you out of the operating process so you can actually start analyzing what's working and what's not working and teaching and training and sort of taking more of a control on the supervisory roles of how things are going in your business and how it's being accepted by the general public. Bye.